We've all seen the houses that look like this. And for the record, that place looked better than it smelled. Plus, did you notice all that trash in those food bags that didn't have any food in them? That's because the rats, well, they'd already cleaned the place out. Maybe you've inherited your house from a family member or a friend. Let's talk about your options when it comes to selling a house in this condition. But first, real quick. My name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that has sold more than 1,000 properties. We get calls, texts, and emails from folks just like you who are looking to sell a property, and I absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to sell a property in the next 9 or 90 days, it doesn't matter. Give us a call, shoot us an email, or stop by YouTubeRealEstateAgent.com and fill in your information, and then we'll reach out to you. So how do you sell a property that is like this? This is a two family where the first floor was completely filled with hoarding, well, junk. There are a couple ways, but it ultimately comes down to the easier the process than the bigger the discount. You essentially have three options when you lo are looking to sell a hoarder house. Now, I'd say the most common way of selling a hoarder house is to sell to an investor. This is the easiest way to sell a property. The investor, they're going to buy the property in as is condition. All that junk sitting in there, well, it's now their junk. They will close on the property generally within 14 to 21 days. There are no home inspections, no realtor fees, no surprises. Like I said, it's the easiest way to sell a house. But these investors, they're going to demand a discount. The in-between is what I call wholetail. This is essentially where you clean the property out, then list it on the retail market without doing any improvements. This is the way to maximize a property's sales price in its current condition. You'll have to arrange and pay for the clean out. And I had one hoarder property where the lady actually started going to the bathroom on the floor. Watch out for this because this turns into a biohazard, which is an entirely different animal to clean out. It will be absolutely absurdly more expensive. So anyway, back to wholetail. So selling wholetail, you'll have the upfront cost of cleaning the property out. You could have a situation where you have to deal with a property inspection as well as a more traditional type of financing instead of cash. You also have realtor fees to pay. So there's more work and you're going to have to invest some upfront capital, but you're going to net a considerable amount more on the property doing it the wholetail way. And then there's the third option. This option will take some work, a bunch of upfront capital, but will also net you a lot more for the property, provided that you don't over improve it, that is. When you do improvements to a property, you will have to do everything that you did in the wholesale option, but will also need to invest and improve the property. Now, the best improvements are the ones that are cosmetic. Think painting, flooring, kitchens, and vats. You'll also not make money on doing things like systems, windows, or a roof is a great example. But ultimately, if those items are in need of repair or replacement, then a buyer, well, they're going to expect that they're done. But be careful to not over-improve. You also want to look at how much more you're going to get by going this route. You want to take the expected adjusted amount and subtract the cost of repairs as well as the fees. Is it worth it? That's a question that only you can answer. For some people, an extra 10 grand, that might be worth the work and the risk. But others may think that the number needs to be, well, 40 grand as an example. The important thing is that you need to know your numbers. You need to build in a, oh shoot budget, <laughs> there's always surprises. And another thing to think about is the amount of errors. As an example, say if there are three errors and the increase in value will be $30,000, then that means it's $10,000 for each error. Is that enough? Again, only you can decide if that's worth it. So if you have a house that looks like this, then know that it's not a first and this isn't a one-off. I remember watching those hoarding shows and thinking to myself that this is just stupid. Just pick that up. But it took me selling this property to realize that this is a serious disease. Also know that these houses are special situations. Which one of these three options will work best for you? Reach out should you have any questions. Again, my name is Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Homes Team. I hope you found this video helpful. Whether you have a hoarding home in Massachusetts or anywhere else in the country, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Yes, I can personally only help people in Massachusetts, but I do have expert agents that I work with all over the country and it would be a true pleasure to make an introduction for you and at no cost to you obviously and if you're looking for a cash offer then i can help you with that as well it doesn't matter where you are in the country if you have questions or are interested in selling your hoarder house then give us a call shoot me an email or visit us at youtube real estate agent.com and fill in your information and then we'll reach out to you you can also find our information in the description below until next time